Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters World and today we're on Clearwater Beach here in Clearwater, Florida for a little video to help you tourists coming to the U.S. Now Florida is the, one of the most popular places for people to come in the U.S. obviously with the beaches and Disney World and all those kind of things and so what I thought I'd do today is give you a kind of a rundown of what you should expect when you stay at hotels here in the U.S. and I'm going to focus on hotels because yes there are B&Bs and there, there's Airbnb and all these kind of things and hostels and stuff like that throughout the U.S. but I'm going to focus on kind of a traditional chain hotel that you're probably going to stay at when you come to the U.S. whether it's like a, a Holiday Inn or a Hampton Inn or something like that. Now obviously we love the beach but I think it's better if we actually go into the hotel room to give you a rough idea. And the chains are pretty standard with how they have things set up, okay? And so that's what we're kind of focus on. And one thing is, you notice these two nice big beds? Yes, they're just queen size beds. This is a double room. In the US, when you get a double room, usually you get two big beds like this. So I can have a double room and I'm here, ah, nice. And the kids can sleep over there and Jocelyn's here. It's so nice, you have plenty of space. And the thing is, I know when you're in you know, someplace in Europe or Asia or Latin America, when you get a double room, you get two single beds and they just kind of push them together. That's very different here. So when you're looking at hotels, if you get a double room, a lot of the times there will be two beds. And sometimes they'll tell you, do you want two, a double room with two queen size beds or two double beds? Or do you want just one big king size bed? That's up to you. But just know they get the nice big beds usually in the hotels here. Another thing you want to know is, uh, just like everywhere else in the U.S., or everywhere, every hotel around the world, plugs can be a problem here, okay? I found that a lot of hotels now are starting to put more plugs in, but it's usually in something like this. My alarm clock has extra plugs, and oh look, my lamp has a USB port. But a lot of times you don't get a lot of plugs in the hotel room, so sometimes you have to move a bed here and there. And I found the lower the price of the hotel room, <laughs> the more pushing of beds to find plugs you're going to have to use. Other things you want to look at in terms of hotels in the U.S., there are some kind of standard strangities that happen out there. It's kind of like this. If you're in a fancy, nice hotel that's charging you lots of money, you think, oh, well, of course, with that much money, I should be getting Wi-Fi and a free, bre or free Wi-Fi, free breakfast, and some other stuff. N no. When you go to nicer hotels, a lot of times you actually have to pay for breakfast and you have to pay for Wi-Fi. I've been places that were charging $16 to $25 for Wi-Fi. And some of these nicer hotels, like if you go to a resort hotel in Vegas or here in Florida, sometimes they'll charge you a resort fee of $20, $30, $40 to use the pool and use the workout room and have the internet and stuff like that. And the thing is, when you book your um, when you book your hotels online, sometimes they don't put that in there. So you have a nice little surprise $20, $25 fee at the end. So do watch out for that. If you're in kind of a resort hotel, they might have those things there. All right. Now, the thing is, though, if you go stay at like a chain hotel, you know, like a Holiday Inn or a Hampton Inn that are, that are significantly cheaper than the resorts, you go there and they'll have free Wi-Fi, you know, and they'll have, you know, free breakfast. And here's the thing. Americans, when we have breakfast, okay, it is usually at a hotel, you'll have like cereal and with milk, you'll have coffee, you'll have maybe bagels or toast you can make, and then you might have bacon and eggs or maybe pancakes or waffles that you make by yourself. The thing is, I've talked to some of the uh, hotel managers here in Florida and around the U.S., and they made a comment about German tourists. They said, German tourists get really upset because they expect, you know, cheese and ham and bread for breakfast. And, and we don't do that. And they get really upset. And I said, look, I'll explain it to them that here in the U.S., breakfast is bacon and eggs or pancakes and waffles or, or cereal and things like that. That's what we have at these hotels. And the thing is, when you go to these cheap hotels, yes, they have that for you as much as you can eat because it's the U.S. We've got to, you know, fatten ourselves up for some reason. Uh, but you do have that. Um, other things I want to look at, usually when you have your hotel, you will have cable television because we love our TV here. Um, there will probably be zero uh, international channels. Maybe you might, I mean, if you're in a place where a lot of foreign tourists go, you might get like Russian TV, you know, RT, or you might get a, a Chinese channel. Uh, you will see, sometimes you'll see uh, Spanish language channels, of course. But like in general, you're not going to see like usually a German channel or a French channel or anything like that. It's all just straight U.S. things. Um, and they'll always have 
not always, most of the time they'll have pay-per-view movies. So you want to see a movie, you can click on that, but they do charge it to your room, and usually they're not too cheap. But don't worry, like my hotel, we have 60 channels. I, I don't know why I have 60 channels, but we have 60 channels, so you do have that. Now the thing is, some of the typical things you're going to see in a hotel room, usually they'll have some kind of booklet or some kind of folder that will have information you need. It'll be like room service, sites in the area, uh, local restaurants, if you want to order pizza to be delivered to your room, a very traditional American thing. Um, they do have that in here. And But if you want to know what's going on in the city or places you should go see, I do recommend going down to the front desk in nicer hotels of a concierge that'll tell you, hey, here's some good restaurants around here. Here's what you should eat. But also, hey, where you shouldn't go when you're in town, what you should watch out for. They will be helpful with that. But, you know, sometimes your best bet is this. I'm at a really nice hotel right now, and I asked them, hey, what are some good restaurants around here? And they literally said, well, well I can print something out for you. I'm like, okay, it's okay. I have TripAdvisor as well. And luckily, with my $25 uh, resort fee I paid for here, I get free internet, but I paid 25 bucks for it. Oh, I haven't used the pool either, so it gets kind of frustrating. Um, but you do have that. Other things you want to think about is when you're driving around the U.S., and you will drive around the U.S. because, one, our bus and train service isn't that great, and you're going to have to drive to go see places, and two, flying everywhere gets prohibitively expensive sometimes and doesn't go everywhere, too, if you want to see some of the smaller cities. So you're going to drive around. And you may think, is where am I going to stay when I'm driving through the U.S. on the highways? And here in the U.S., if you're on any of the major interstates, you will see these chain hotels, the Motel 6s, La Quintas, things like that. You can stay there, and you can just drive up and see if they have space. But one thing I will say is when you're going to be coming to someplace popular like a Florida or New York City or something like that, or you're going for a festival in, in a part time like uh, going to Mardi Gras in New Orleans, you want to make sure that you do book ahead for those locations because they do sell out. And of course, just like everywhere else, the more desirable the weekend, the more higher the prices get. Same thing here in Florida, a Hampton Inn here in you know in by the beach, you know here near the beach in, in Florida, you know. It'll be 250 bucks maybe, whereas that same Hampton Inn with the exact same room will be $99 in, on some highway in the middle of Tennessee. And so what you want to look at is if you're going to be driving around, realize that since the hotels are right on the interstate, you can drive and when you feel tired, you can just pull off and go book a room right away. And usually there are, are spaces. Now, <laughs> in the summer season or Thanksgiving weekend when a lot of people are driving around the U.S., it might be a little bit tougher, so sometimes what we do, if it's one of these busier weekends, we'll like look on our phones and you know see where the closest hotel is or the next town coming up, and we'll call ahead to get a room. Now you can do it online too, but if you call the hotel directly, you usually get preference over the people who go online. So if there's one room left and you're one on the phone, they'll do it right then versus somebody um, online. So. Um, I've actually had that before where we're on the phone like well somebody's trying to book with uh, you know some some online and we're like we're, we're, we're five minutes away and I'm, I'm, here's my credit card number we got the room so you want to look at that um, other things parking at hotels in smaller towns and on the highways is usually free okay if you're in a bigger city like a Chicago or New York or something like that if they have park, if they have parking, it'll be like a valet parking service or something like that, and you could be paying twenty, thirty, forty dollars a day for your parking. So, do watch out for that. So, what we do when we go places is what we do is we'll fly into the big city, we'll take a taxi or something into town, and then we'll enjoy the big city, and then we rent the car the the day we're leaving the big city to go drive around, and then we come back, drop off the car, and spend a couple more days in that big city without the car, so we don't have to spend the extra money. Um, for the parking because it can add up a lot. I mean a lot a lot. So you don't want to watch out for that. Now other things you might want to know about with hotels in the US is the sizes. Usually the sizes are actually pretty big. Like this room, it's a little bit bigger than a typical double room because this is a nicer hotel. Um, but it gives you a rough idea what you're gonna have. I mean you do have you know your, your TVs, there's a there's a refrigerator in here. They a lot of hotels in the US will have a mini bar in there. And I will tell you if you think, oh I'll take one Coke out and I'll put another Coke in, they like memorize the codes on the Coke and you might get charged for it anyway, even if you replaced it. So do be careful with that. And some hotels actually have pressure sensors on there. So if you take something off and you don't put it back within like five seconds, they automatically charge you for it. So do be careful of that when you are traveling with kids. Now, if you are traveling with kids in the US, hey, here's some cool stuff. 
A lot of places, you know, you got kids in there, they'll have a, a pack and play, like a crib kind of thing that you can you can use. We, when our kids were little, we would just show up and ask for it. Um, but again, if it's a busier season, you want to make sure you have one, you know, call them up and say, hey, I want to reserve the pack and play or I want to reserve a crib or a pull out bed. You want to do that beforehand just to make it easier on yourself. Um, also, one thing that's nice is when you have kids, a lot of these chain hotels will have a pool. Even if it's just a small pool, they'll have a pool. So after a day of seeing sights and doing stuff, maybe the kids aren't really excited about seeing the Dolly Museum here in T Tampa, St. Pete. Like, we want to have fun. We wanted to go to the beach. You took us to culture. Ah! But they will probably have a pool there so the kids can jump out and swim around. And you can do that. Most hotel pools do not have lifeguards at all, so you do need to be there with your kids. But it's something you can do when you are here. Other things you find at some hotels, um, if you if you're only spending like a hundred bucks or more a night in some chain or something, which is kind of a typical price. If you're looking for an, like a decent, like an acceptable hotel, if you follow our videos, you see kind of places we stay. Um, acceptable hotels look to be spending at least a hundred dollars a night on some like normal towns. Not in New York. New York, you're paying two hundred, three hundred bucks. And here in Clearwater, Florida, two hundred, three hundred bucks for hotel rooms. Like you know, because these are prime locations but around the country when you're going around usually you can find places from 100 to 120 dollars and one thing you need to know is remember in the u.s taxes are not included in that price so when you go you have the hundred dollar hotel room might be 110 or 120 dollars because a lot of what happens is a lot of um, communities will actually charge extra for hotel tax so you have the normal you have the normal taxes that are there and then there's a special hotel tax to add even more tax onto it so don't forget that price i'm talking about add on anywhere from five to 20%, 21% on there for your hotel taxes. Another thing you wanna look at is sometimes you're exploring a city and maybe you're flying out that night. Cause I know a lot of times when we fly back to Europe, um, we have like a nine o'clock at night flight. And do I really wanna spend, a, you know, pay the money for another hotel room for that night? A lot of the hotels will hold your luggage. Uh, so that is a, that is a plus. Um, then it can be helpful in some of these other locations like in busy cities, excuse me, in busy cities. Another thing you wanna look at is what's the difference between a hotel and a motel. Well, usually a hotel, well, a hotel is enclosed. So the hallways, like there's a hallway inside the building. A motel, the doors are on the outside. So when you open the door, you're outside. So a lot of people just drive their car up and get there. Usually the motels are cheaper. However, you know, my wife just flat out refuses to stay in those because she worries about safety with the kids. So that's one of the things you might want to look at. But the thing is, just because the name is a motel or a hotel doesn't necessarily mean that that's how their rooms will be. So you do want to check things out. And that's one thing that's great is all the hotels or most hotels in the U.S., people have reviewed them on TripAdvisor or Bookings or Trivago or whoever you use. And do check those things out because honestly, we, we literally live by TripAdvisor reviews by looking at what people like and don't like. And, you know, when you're looking at them, don't just look at the fives and the ones. Check out a four or a three because then they're, sometimes they're more realistic. You want to look at that. Um, <laughs> other things you want to know about is the bathroom. Hey, guess what? Here in the U.S., you can throw all of the toilet paper down the toilet. You're welcome. Our pipes can take it. It's no problem. Yes, there is a garbage can next to the toilet, but that's because you might take off your makeup or clean out your ears and want to throw stuff away. That's what goes in there. The toilet paper goes down the toilet and you wash, and it goes down there. Um, most hotels will have a hair dryer when you are there. Sometimes you have to look for it. Like, where'd it go? It might be in the, in the closet or it might be underneath the sink and stuff like that. Um, usually you'll get soaps, shampoos, conditioners, sometimes a body cream and things like that. You will have that. Again, this is from like the... Let's say the $75 and up price point for hotels, you'll have those a lot of times. Now, when it comes to paying for your hotel in the US, one thing you need to know is when you book it online, you use a credit card and they will ask for your credit card that you booked with and they will ask for a form of ID. Hotels, <laughs> well, let's say most hotels, let's say 99% of the time, will not let you have your room unless you have that credit card or you have and a, and a form of ID. They have to have those things. Um, so you will need to make sure you have a credit card and those kind of things. Paying cash for your hotel room, sometimes you can do that, but you have to like reserve it with a credit card for these kind of things. So that can be a bit of a pain in the butt uh, because in the US, cash isn't king. People like to pay with cards. So that's your best bet with that. Now, what's cool is in the US, a lot of times you don't have to do the checkout. You just leave your keys in the room and you leave. Uh, if you paid up front, if you use your credit card that way, some will actually slide the uh, the receipt underneath your door. 
uh, during the night, so you can just pick it up and go. Some places have quick checkouts, so they make sure you leave on. But it's not really that big of an issue. Um, in terms of keys and things like that, pretty much all hotels now just use, use the card system. Uh, the cheaper hotels you and you know kind of fancy places might still have a key key but you don't have that too often and when you have those keys you usually keep them with you here you don't leave it at the front desk okay another thing is if you need extra pillows you need extra blankets things like that or the heater's not working or the tv's not working just dial to the front desk and they will help you out they'll send somebody up with more blankets or more pillows or an explanation of how to use the tv those things are up there now Let's say you're going to arrive here in the U.S. at 6 in the morning, okay? You're like, well, hey, can we get an early check-in? Well, here's the thing. If you're going to get in that early in the morning, most likely they cannot give you an early check-in that early. Maybe a room's done, no one was there before, they might be able to do it, but I would say probably not. So what you want to look at is if you're going to be getting that early in the morning, you might want to book the room the night before to have that. Uh, that space you can just come in and do that because early check-in is tough sometimes because what happens is the cleaning staff might not get there till 9 in the morning or 9 30 in the morning to start cleaning the hotel rooms and so there's no one to clean it up even though the people already left there's nobody to clean it up and so it takes them time and if you want an early check-in they they might charge you a slight fee uh, to get into your room early some places they don't like in in, in uh, Las Vegas they, they want to charge an early fee uh, I was in New York, like, hey, it's no problem. Okay, so that's really a kind of it happens or doesn't happen. Whoever's working the front desk at that time. The same thing can happen if you want a late checkout. So, for example, my flight is at 5 o'clock uh, tomorrow, and, well, I check out is at noon. And so, shoot, what am I going for all that time? I don't want to, like, sit out there with my bags in the, in the lobby for two hours and then get the cab out to the airport. So... I might ask, hey, can I get a later checkout, like a 2 o'clock checkout or something like that. I mean, some hotels, they're totally fine with it. They don't charge you anything extra. They just want to know, so they're not trying to clean your room 20 times. But some places will charge you a fee for that or charge you a half day. And some hotels will tell you, look, if you want that extra time, you have to pay for a room for another day, which we've done before in, in places before. Because you know what? Our flight was at 9 o'clock at night. And you know what? I'm not going to wander around Chicago for eight hours until I can go grab a taxi out to the airport. So you do want to think about these things when you are reserving rooms. So sometimes it's best just to have an extra day at the end or the beginning. So, yes, you get in at 6 in the morning. But I didn't spend the night there. Yeah, it doesn't matter. At least when you get to the hotel, at 6.30, you have a place to put your head down. Now, some other things you want to look at is if you're traveling a lot around the U.S., you might be wondering, hey, do, 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 do the hotels do laundry? Well, it really depends which hotel you're in. Some hotels actually have laundry services that they'll do the laundry for you. Some hotels actually have, like, washing machines in there that you can actually go and use and, and wash your own clothes. And other places have nothing. So you will need to check that out. And usually hotels will, will have that in their amenities part, like extras we do have, it will be there. So you do want to check out that. So like I said, you got your toilet seats and stuff like that, and you've got your garbage. But the toilet paper does not go in here. The toilet paper and stuff goes in the toilet, so you're okay with that. And usually you're gonna have lots of towels, plenty of washcloths. Oh, something we don't have a lot in European hotels is washcloths. Here in the US, plenty of washcloths to wash yourself, okay? Now, <laughs> another thing about the hotels in the US is, you know, when you travel around the world, a lot of places, all they have is a shower. A lot of hotels in the US do have a bathtub, but holy crap, they can be really slick getting out. And you'll see they have these like bars here to hold on to when you get in and out. I've known people to slip and fall and really hurt themselves. Hell, my neighbor behind me where I used to live, he slipped, fell and broke his neck. Okay, so you gotta be careful with that. Um, and, but you will have usually a bathtub with a shower in it, so you have that. I will say though, think about it, this is a hotel where lots of people go and do stuff and things like that. Do you really want to lay in here with a hot bath, soaking and getting everything off of there? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so you might want to think about that. Before you hop in for that nice warm bath, I think I'll stick with a shower, thank you. <laughs> Another thing is when you're running out of certain materials, let's say toilet paper, Again, you can just call the front desk, they'll bring some to you. If you see the ladies in the hallway, the, the cleaning ladies, it's okay to say, hey man, could I have some more? They're glad to give it to you. And don't forget your extra soaps and stuff. You have those, oh look, even more washcloths. I mean, literally in the US, we love these things. We use them to wash ourselves all the time. So feel free to use those, okay, they're to wash in the shower. 
Not the bathtub. Well, you can use the bathtub, but bathtub at hotels. Ah, kind of gross. Now, when you're cuddled up in your bed and you're all sleepy, sleepy, of course, that's when the alarm goes off. And you might wonder, when should I set my alarm? Well, usually people set their alarms for, hey, when is breakfast? Hotel breakfast during the week? It depends. If it's more of a business hotel, they might start as early as 6 in the morning. Usually it's like a 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the morning start for breakfast. And usually goes till about 10. Okay. On the weekends, it might start at 8 and go to 11, especially on Sundays. But you do want to check out. But usually breakfast is gone by 10 in most, hel most hotels, 11 for sure. So if you want to get that free breakfast, make sure you get down there on time. And if you have to leave early, early in the morning, like we've had 3 o'clock in the morning ugh, departures to get to the airport. It was not fun. Some hotels, if you let them know beforehand, they'll make a little to-go breakfast bag for you with like a sandwich, an apple, and a juice box. That can really help. If you got that 6 a.m. flight and nothing's open at the airport, happened to us a couple weeks ago going to Mexico. <laughs> it was a lifesaver having just something for the kids to nibble on on the way to the airport. Anyway, I'm going to get in my pajamas or maybe I'll just sleep naked. No, no one needs to see that. Um, <laughs> here in the hotel. I hope this helped you know a little bit more about hotels in the U.S. Um, I'll try to put more videos helping explaining traveling the U.S. more. We do have our 10 things that will shock you about visiting the U.S., 5 things you love and hate about visiting the U.S., um, tipping in the U.S., videos about on New York and Boston and New Orleans and Savannah, uh, stuff on Florida, all kinds of things. You know, Disney World, we've got videos on that. Uh, all on our website at waltersworld.com and here on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash waltersworld. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and we really appreciate your likes and subscriptions. And uh, we do hope you have a nice night wherever you are sleeping here in the U.S. of A. <laughs> Good night, and uh, we'll see you later. Hmm, I gotta get up early morning and hit the beach.